Last night, the Overwatch League website posted a new article which contains some very interesting and important details surrounding each team's player contract status at the end of the 2019 season. Therefore, today I thought it'd be important to go over and discuss what we've now discovered regarding every player's contract ahead of free agency, opening on Monday the 7th of October, as a quick aside from my gauntlet previews that we'll be posting over the next few days. Before looking at each team individually, it's probably important that I clear up some of the terms that I'll be using throughout this video. Each player's contract situation has been designated into one of three categories, the first being free agent, which means the player can sign with any team including the team they were previously on starting Monday. The second is under contract, which means that the player has signed with their current team for at least the 2020 season. The last category is team option, which means that the team that the player is currently on has until the 11th of November to exercise their option to retain the player before they become an unrestricted free agent. Hopefully that all makes sense, but I'll be happy to clarify any confusion down in the comments below. But it's very important to stress that regardless of contract situation, it's still entirely possible that players may re-sign to their original team on a new deal, or that currently contracted players may still be released or traded. But I'll give my opinions on specific situations as we look at each team moving forward. Lastly, before I get into studying each team individually, I would also just take a moment to highlight one of the other interesting details from the top of this article in regard to player salaries. This has been an area that has largely been kept private, aside from the occasional leak, but the Overwatch League has come out and publicly told us that the average player earned 114,000 US dollars, consisting of a 97k dollar base salary, a 16k dollar from the prize pool winnings, and 1,000 dollars from signing bonuses. Beside this, they also revealed that the medium player salary was $80,000, which is something very important to establish, as for those of you who don't know what a median is, it is effectively the middle value of a data set. So effectively, if we were to line up every player's salary in order of lowest to highest, 80k would be the result we find at the halfway mark. The main reason that I'm pointing this out is to highlight that because this is less than the average player salary, we can deduce that the majority of the players in the league are earning between the minimum of $50,000 and the average of $114,000. Whilst there are a much smaller number who are earning in excess of that, but those who are are earning vast amounts themselves, probably around 200 to 300k. Putting aside the salary discussion, Let's now get to looking at each team's player contract status individually, with these as accurate as of last night on the 4th of October. Going in alphabetical order, we begin with the Atlanta Reign. We can see that every member of the current Atlanta roster is currently on team option deals, with Funny Astro the only player who is fully under contract. There aren't really any surprises here as I think the roster is currently in a very healthy situation, and with nearly everyone on team option deals, we now have just over a month to evaluate their options, potentially bring in other players in the meantime before making firmer decisions. Next up are the Boston Uprising, we see a lot more upheaval. Aimgod and Kellex have become free agents and will probably be moving on to different teams. Alamel, Persia and RCK are on team option deals, with their future being decided soon, whilst Axiom, Blase, Kalahex and Fusions remain under contract. Overall, these contract situations make quite a lot of sense for Boston, who have shown in the past that they aren't afraid to bring in players during the offseason. I think the interesting player to keep an eye on is Aimgod, who I personally believe is still a really strong flex support player who clearly fell out with the organisation. It wouldn't surprise me to see him picked up in free agency quite quickly. The Chengdu Hunters are the next team on the list, and as we can see, their entire roster remains under contract for the 2020 season. For me, this makes complete sense, as this team completely outperformed their pre-season expectations and have shown their worth within a unique style. They're going to be joined by the Chinese superstar Lee for 2020 as well, so stability at this stage as they head home would appear to be the right decision. Following them are the Dallas Fuel, who interestingly have every member of their roster under contract, with the exception of Note, who is a free agent. I would imagine this is because they signed all their players to multi-year deals and just kept Note's original Boston contract. Whilst it would be surprising to see them not re-sign Note, it's not impossible they completely let him go, but the bigger shock would be if they kept everyone they currently have under contract, as looking subjectively, there are a couple of players there who haven't performed up to standard and will need to be let go if Dallas wants to aggressively go into free agency and mount a serious challenge for 2020. The Florida Mayhem come next, and interestingly, they had their entire team contracted under team options, with the exception of their two stars, Fate and Sireplayer, who remain unsurprisingly under contract. Also, see a lot of changes coming for this roster ahead of next year. I do agree with their decision to keep them under team option deals, giving the organisation another month or so of decision making, especially with them changing the general manager situation after letting go of bare hands. Sorry, man. They're going to charge of a lot of different contract situations for their players, with Char and Rio the only two remaining under contract. Eileen? Happy, Nero, Only Wish, Rise, and Shu are all those on team options, whilst Bishu, Fraggy, and Hopper are free agents. I'd be very surprised if those on team options weren't brought back for 2020, with Guangzhou being one of the most exciting rosters in the league due to the potential of their players, with five scheduled homestands for next season. Bishu and Fraggy certainly deserve other opportunities, but I'm not too sure they'll be staying with the charge. As for Hopper, it would be astounding to me if he didn't get re signed, having been one of their most consistent and valuable players for Guangzhou this season, and if he remains a free agent, 
I expect them to be snapped up very quickly by other teams. Now, we move on to our next Chinese team, the Hangzhou Spock, who don't have any free agents, and instead are split between team option contracts, which include Bazzi, No Smite, Revenge, and Jin, whilst the rest remain under contract. This doesn't surprise me one bit after what has been a successful season for the Spock. The only players having their futures being debated still are those who are largely sat on the bench, so perhaps a couple might be released. I think the interesting story though will be in regards to Crystal, who although under contract has certainly created a rift between himself and the organisation towards the last end of the season, so perhaps he's one player set to be traded unless the two sides can work things out. The Houston Outlaws have had a very tough season, with issues both on and off stage. Most of their core remains under contract with Danto the only player on a team option, whilst a trio of Arhan, Vanny and Boink have become free agents. You can expect Dante to definitely return next season, but I wouldn't put too much hope in seeing their free agents return. The Outlaws need to be one of the biggest players in free agency this year to become more competitive in 2020, and hopefully recent behind the scenes resolutions help with the general sense of stability. There are also players that although under contract may also be replaced later down the line, or are at least in positions where they can be upgraded upon, so this is a team that personally I'll be keeping a very close eye on. Early Gladiators, meanwhile, despite having two strong back-to-back -back seasons, are in a precarious position heading into the off-season and free agency. They've already released their coaching staff and don't have any of their current players firmly committed under contract for next season, with Big Goose, Decay, Panker, Ripper, Raw and Shaz under team options, and with perhaps the exception of Ripper, they should all get re-signed. The big questions come with their free agents, who are Hydration, Shawfall and Void, all very talented players who I'm surprised the Gladiators didn't try to sign to new contracts earlier. If all three hit the free agent market, I expect there to be a lot of interest in them, with fresh starts on new teams perhaps taking them to the next level, whilst leaving quite a void on the Gladiators lineup. Their neighbours, the LA Valiant, have one of the smallest rosters in the Overwatch League, and as such it doesn't come as much of a surprise that most of them are being kept under contract to keep stability, with the only exceptions being Fact Fiction, McGravy, and Shax who are on team options, although I see them all being brought back for 2020. This is a team that has good foundations and now needs to bring in a couple more stars over free agency to really make them proper contenders again and bring back some of that dominance we saw in the latter stages of the Overwatch League Season 1. Next up we have a London Spitfire who have already created shockwaves before his article by announcing the release of Birdrick, Nuss and Guard as free agents, symbolising a major shift from their 2018 success due to a disappointing 2019. Everyone else on the roster remains under contract with the exception of Quartermain who is on a team option deal. I don't think enough has been said about how disappointing their title defence has been this season, with the squad never really living up to expectations, and reliable performances only really coming from their stars profit and fury. They can't do everything on their own, and looking ahead to next season they need to aggressively pursue some of the top talents in free agency, or from contenders if they want to be considered top threats once more. The New York Excelsior are the next team that's up, and whilst it has been a relatively successful season for them, it once again has been overshadowed by an inability to get over the hump when it's mattered the most and really competitively challenged for the title. Interestingly, most of the team remains under contract with the exception of Flower who is on a team option, but also one other, Mekko, who very surprisingly has become a free agent. I'll be curious to see if they try and re-sign him, or instead if they have our eyes focused elsewhere, as I think he's another who will receive a lot of attention in the free agent market. Otherwise, probably one or two key additions might be enough to bring New York closer in 2020 to the top two sides of a shock in Titans. Moving on now to the Paris Eternal, Despite not living up to their potential throughout 2019, generally staying quite mediocre, no one on the team has been made a free agent, with Bembest, Hip, Nico and Soon all remaining under contract, whilst the rest are on team option deals. It wouldn't surprise me to see a couple of their players eventually released, but either in free agency, through trades or recruitment from contenders, this is a team that needs serious improvement across the board if they want to become playoff challengers next year. Philadelphia Fusion, like London, also disappointed in 2019 when compared to their 2018 performance, although in retrospect, they've also suffered from a general inconsistency that's never really seen them respected as major players. Philly's contract situations are one of the most interesting, with only two players under contract in Boombox and Poco, whilst Elk and Kib are on team options. This means that currently, Carpe, EQO, Neptuno, Sado and Snillo are all set to hit the market as free agents, which can see a massive overhaul of the Fusion roster heading into 2020. I'd be shocked if they all left, but especially in regards to Carpe, EQO and Snillo, teams in need of DPS talents will definitely be looking in their directions almost immediately. At last we reach the 2019 Overwatch League champions for San Francisco Shock, who smartly have kept almost their entire roster under contract for next season, with the team certainly set to challenge again due to their quality and depth. The only exception is Nevix, who has become a free agent and is another who purely for his potential and flexibility is one player who will garner attention and could be one of the best pickups available in free agency. Following them are the Soul Dynasty, who have some eye-catching contract situations. Fitz, Highly, Illicit Jexer, Marvel and Michelle all remain under contract whilst Fletcher is on a team option. 
who are currently listed as free agents are the three remaining members of the old lunatic high roster in Ruje Hong, Toby and Zumba. This is likely due to their initial contracts coming to a close, but it would be very strange to see them all leave the team this off-season. It's not impossible however, and even those with contracts are still under threat in my opinion. With Seoul returning home for next season, they hold a major advantage over their rivals in terms of recruitment, and this is the main reason why I expect them to be very aggressive in trying to recruit the top three agents and contender stars to try and live up to their name in 2020 as proper challengers as they return home. Next on the list are the Shanghai Dragons, who enjoyed a vastly improved 2019 season, even with a stage 3 title triumph after their awful over 40 2018 season. Only Envy and Izaki remain under contract, with nearly everyone else on team options, although you can probably expect most of them to be re-signed. The interesting player of note is Gamsu, who is listed as a free agent and is someone who will probably garner some interest if he hits free agency. Overall though, this is a team that certainly needs strengthening across the board to become more consistent challengers, and their free agency approach will be one to watch. The Toronto Defiance certainly had a very strange 2019 season themselves, it was kind of all over the place. It therefore makes sense in my opinion they have everyone on team option contracts to give themselves a little more time to decide what direction they want to be heading in as a team, with those that end up staying like Logics I expect, likely becoming the foundations that the team attempts to build around during the off season so they can find their fees in 2020. They might have fallen short in the grand finals, but the Vancouver Titans have still enjoyed an incredibly successful season as they established themselves as one of the giants within the Overwatch League at this moment in time. Like the shock, it doesn't surprise me that most of them remain under contract, with the only exceptions being Rappel and Tizzy, who despite being on team options will probably be re-signed. Perhaps the only thing they might do in the off-season is bring in some contenders' talents to develop, but regardless if they do anything, they're still in a very good situation. Finally we have the Washington Justice, who are another who have released their entire coaching staff. Alongside them, Addo, Ark, Hyonu, Janus, Sansom and Sleepy have all been made free agents, with their futures in my opinion differing depending upon each player, of course not forgetting that returns aren't out of the question. Corey, Elivote and Lulcish are under contract, whilst Guido and Stratus are on team options. The main question will be what direction the new coaching staff wants to head in, as this will likely decide the direction they want to take in free agency, but perhaps we might see a general shift to a more western orientated side, in contrast to the Korean dominated lineup at the beginning of 2019, but we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully that makes it all clear about the contract status of every player in the Overwatch League had a free agency opening in just a couple of days on Monday the 7th of October. As I said before, I'll be happy to answer any questions or queries you might have about this down below in the comments, and let me know if you'd like me to continue bringing you all news during the off season. But otherwise we've reached the end of my video, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Remember that I'll be bringing you my contenders previews over the next few days, so if you enjoyed and don't want to miss out, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter for this continuing competitive Overwatch coverage and content. And I hope Enjoy the rest of your day.